and welcome to a Resource Review ICT Special. Under the microscope today are three ICT resources for primary science. All of them are websites and they are an interactive games and lesson plans site, a cross-curricular interactive cartoon website and a science site packed with quizzes and games. Recommending today's resources is Chris Hargrove, an independent IT consultant and former primary deputy head teacher. On the panel today is Year One teacher Angela Streak from Wimbledon Chase Primary School in London and Ray Barker, director of the British Educational Suppliers Association. And our resident ICT expert Matthew Tosh will be weighing up the resources in the test lab. So, Chris, you've chosen for us today three free websites. Was that deliberate? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, these days, there are so many free websites out there that teachers can get hold of very simply. Uh, lots of schools have got their internet access at a broadband level. They can get a very reliable stream of these things to them. All right, well, let's have a look at your first website. It's called CrickWeb. Tell us a little bit about it. Right, this is, there's lots of different software that's uh, available on here. You can see we've got literacy, science, early years stuff, which is rather nice. But obviously, the science piece is what we're looking at today. Uh, if we go to somewhere like the body parts section, this, first of all, shows us that we've got worksheets that are the lesson plans that all the educational material is sat behind this with notes of how you might use it. If we go into uh, the actual material itself, you see we get a, a choice of different characters that we can go to. Uh, this is a simple naming the body parts section. These are simple resources to use and yet you can go out and pay an awful lot of money for a very similar product on the market. Well, thank you, Chris. Before we go any further, let's go over and visit Matthew in the test lab for his view on CrickWeb. I've got a great little website for you here. It features lots of interactive screens across literacy, maths and science. But obviously, we're going to be looking at the science ones today. On the screen, you can see all the topics that are available. If I scroll down, we're going to have a look at this body parts one here. Now, most of the tasks on the website are intuitive to use and they're really colourful and easily laid out. So here I just need to match the words up. If I click on one of the words, then the site reads it out and that can help with pronunciation and reading. So I'll just move a couple of them around and then you get some feedback by clicking the check button. Obviously I did that to show you what happens if you get things wrong. We'll have a look at a healthy eating one now. This one's quite nice, it's a pie chart and you just click on the screen and it gives you information about the different food groups. But the best bit is this here, the sorting activity. This conveyor belt here, it sends bits of food out and you have to sort them into different baskets. So if I just start it up, you see the first bit comes out here and I lift it up and drop it into the, the bread basket like that and it keeps going on. It's a very generation game and I'm just waiting for a cuddly toy to pop out. Under each screenshot, there's a link for teachers, and if you click on it, it opens up a lesson plan, giving you links to QCA schemes of work and notes about the activity on the screen. Now, I've only shown you a couple of activities on the website. There is a good variety here, things where children can type in words, identify strange sounds. There's, there's plenty to go on. One thing I will say, though, that is that your web browser needs to be flash-enabled. This is standard in most schools, and you need a decent broadband connection to avoid potentially long download times. This is because the site is quite media-rich. It's a fun site to use, but I'm still waiting for me cuddly toy. Well, Chris, Matthew seemed to think the site had a lot to offer, mm -hmm. but one potential limitation is that if a pupil gets something wrong. They were just told to try again. They weren't really helped out with any feedback. Is that something that you'd like to see changed or improved? Certainly. Uh, however, to actually expect someone to create pieces of software in that sort of detail is asking an awful lot of Particularly them. if it's free, I suppose. Well, so yeah, it's a free resource. Having said that, clicking on the back button on the browser takes you back through and you can put yourself forward in that sort of way. So it's fairly simple to operate. OK, well, and let's use. see how it went down in the classroom. Angela, you've tried out CrickWeb. What did you think? I found it a great resource. Um, not only is it very visual, but there's great auditory links. Um, as I click here on one of the people, um, you can clearly see where the Talk. programme is easy to use. The instructions are simple. And again, I very much like the way 
that um, it's uh, accessible to all children. So it's definitely one that I would highly recommend and use a lot. A very positive review there. Ray, what do you think of this as a resource? This has a particularly clean look, that's what I like about it. And what the ICT does is it adds what it should add. It should add the value, it should add the sound, it should add the feedback. I think there is feedback. Um, and if you're using it as a teacher on the board, you know, you're there to give that kind of feedback. But as you said, if they want that kind of, that kind of level of assessment and feedback, then unfortunately you're going to have to pay for it. Absolutely. Because that's where the development costs come in. in and that, that's in where it should making. be happening. Exactly. OK, well, thank you all very much. Time now to move on to Chris's second choice of resource. Tell us about this one. Um, this one actually wasn't developed, I don't think, with an educational purpose in mind. We're looking at Poisson Rouge here. Uh, the science applications for this, or the ones that I use, um, I would actually have these toys in the, in the same room uh, as having the software. And what I would be doing with this would be sitting with a group of children and discussing with them the types of movement that I was looking at. Okay. It's a great stimulus and a talking point. All right, thank you very much. Well, let's go and see what Matthew made of it in the test lab. The Poisson Rouge website is both colourful and intuitive to use. The startup screen shows lots of toys in a playroom and each one links to a different activity. And I found some science ones by clicking on these dangly objects here. Now, the aim of this is it's a camouflage game and you've got to drop these objects into the picture in the right place. So I just pick that one up there, drop it down like that. Now, because the website's aimed at young children, there's no clicking and dragging. You just click on an object once, then you can drag it up to the screen quite easily, click again, and it drops it down. Now, this game is quite easy. I've found some more complicated ones, like this one here. It's quite mind-bending, this one. And you drag the beetles up in the same way. It may only be key stage one, but this is keeping me on my toes, this one. I think I find this one quite challenging. To get back to the main menu, you click on the red fish, the poisson rouge. And there's some more science-related activities in this window here. Again, they're really colourful and easy to use. So we'll try this one here. Now, the aim of this one is to find the beetles. They're all hidden in the undergrowth. And you move your pointer around to uncover it like that. And when you found them, you click on them in numerical order. And they run away. The design of the website is both simple and straightforward, not to mention colourful. One thing I do like is the fact there's not lots of pop-up windows, so it's easy to navigate around. The website runs on Flash, so you'll need to have this installed on your browser, which, as we know, is pretty much standard for most schools. Alors, pour le poisson rouge, c'est au revoir. Well, Chris, I love the look of that beetle game. But what I find is there wasn't really any instructions on how to play these games. Wouldn't verbal or written instructions help? I, I tend to find sitting with the children, the children explore it, and that's one of the beauties of the site, the fact that they'll actually go in and try and find what's going on, and they will play with what's there. OK, thank you very much. Well, Angela, how did you find this site in your classroom? The children responded very positively to this, and I'm assuming it's because of the visual stimulation. In terms of enhancing my lessons, I didn't find the uh, website was overly helpful in terms of the science aspects. If I go to this game here, I mean, it's one way of introducing forces. Again, I'd have the resources there to use, and we could talk about pushes and pulls that are being inflicted on the toys, but not all the toys are relevant for the introduction of forces, and so I wasn't overly impressed in terms of that. So did you find it, just, it wasn't perhaps specific enough for your needs? Yeah, it wasn't very specific to the uh, topic in hand, but as a cross-curricular website, I was impressed there. And it's one that I would have in the classroom on the class computer that the children can use in, during their free time. Yeah. OK. I think you're, you're dead right there. The way that I envisage this being used, bearing in mind, like I said, this was never produced with an educational perspective in mind, yeah. is to look at it and think, as I was working through with it, those are the sorts of things that I would do. I would get the toys out. I would relate concrete activities to this. Yeah. So, Ray, do you want to comment on that? Uh, my first reaction was it's a very expensive glorified colouring book. And um, if you're going to um, you know, invest in ICT in your school and hard-pressed schools... Sorry to interrupt, but when you say expensive... Well, I'm talking about the equipment that you have to have it on. Ah, right. 
I mean, this is free, okay, fine. But, you know, you have a computer to put it on. If you have, have many computers in your classroom, and one of this is going, kids are pulling and playing and doing everything yeah. with absolutely unclear objectives as to what they're getting out of it. They're going to have a load of fun, great. But, you know, in a hard-pressed classroom where, um, you know, it's very difficult to get hold of computer time most of the time, I think probably, you know, using, using the toys to do it um, would actually be a much more positive thing from my perspective. Well, we haven't got much time, so Chris, if you could just come back on that. If I can come back in, excellent and enjoyment, one of the big pushes for the government at the moment is enjoyment, and it's done in an excellent way. OK, well, now time to move on to Chris's third choice of resource, another website. This is from the BBC called Science Clips. Tell us about this one. There's a plethora <coughs> of simulation software out on the market at the moment, all sorts of materials. Uh, and my feeling is um, if you're looking for a, a simulation of a science activity, I would like to see simulations that cannot be reproduced in a classroom. Uh, but if we get hold of a site like this, this has been thought through, it's got educational backing, it's got those uh, teaching objectives that we were t talking about earlier actually built into it. Okay, let's, should we have a little look? Certainly. If I go five to six years old here, uh, I'll go to light and dark. Okay. Okay. Uh, and if we run that, we can run that full screen, which looks quite nice uh, on some sort of projection system. We're loading that up now. All right, so we've got a room with a lamp in the middle of it, so what? What we can do is we can move this round and I can choose another item, drop it in the centre of the room and we instantly get a reaction to that. Uh, one of the nice things about this is there's a certain amount of nervousness about having fire in a primary classroom. Don't understand it myself, but there you go. Uh, if we move through, we can get hold of the candle and we can bring that in. So these are things that are, are difficult for us to, to do and simulate okay. necessarily within a, a school. Well, let's, let's just see how it worked in a school. Uh, Angela, did your pupils respond well to this? Yes, we've used the BBC website. We use it throughout the school. And um, as Chris was saying, again, it's the simulations, the experiments that you might not necessarily be able to carry out in the classroom. Mm. And drawing on the light and dark, for example, again, we wouldn't be able to have candles for the fire alarms, etc. So again, they could see how much light comes from that source without having to actually have it in the classroom. Ray, what did you think of this? Uh, great. Um, again, it's kind of you know perfect interactive whiteboard stuff and all that stuff about simulations, giving them experiences that they can't get anywhere else, or busy teachers or actually um, teachers who don't have expertise or are nervous about it to do. This is a kind of way of um, of you know backing up those core principles and and you know the, the quiz and the help. Great, it really helps kids. They can use it by themselves if they want. I think. OK, well, thank you very much, all of you. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we looked at were Crick Web from Crick School, Northampton, Poisson Rouge from Interactica.com, and Science Clips from the BBC. For more information about any of the resources that we've talked about, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review or email us resource review at teachers.tv. So a very big thank you to our panel, to Chris, to Angela and to Ray. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye. <laughs>